Alright, hey guys, this is Chris from Craftix, and today I'm going to run through a little bit of Rotary Craft and just show you the basics on power management. And one of the things I want to get into is just kind of going over the industrial coil. Um, for those of you that are not familiar with Rotary Craft, it's a fairly new mod. Um, the industrial coil, you can pretty much think of it just like the energy cells from thermal expansion. I'm sure most of you are more familiar with thermal expansion. Uh, the mod's been out for a while and it's pretty popular. It's an awesome mod. These are actually both great mods and I really think Rotary Craft is going to uh, become a very uh, dominant mod. Uh, it does a lot of things that other mods really have not uh, incorporated as efficiently. Uh, so we'll get into a little bit of the basics. So again, they're basically um, these basically do the same thing. You know, if you right click here, you can choose the output and the input, and it shows you how much is stored. Um, well, the same thing you can do with this one. Uh, if I right click this coil, I can change the radians per second and the torque in nanometers. And uh, what's great about that is certain machines in rotary craft require large amounts of power, but some require more angular speed, uh, like radians per second, and some require more torque. So with these combined, you multiply these to find out your power output. Now, um, uh, I'm going to get into one of the easiest ways, I think, if you're familiar with thermal expansion, is you're going to come over and create this uh, magnostatic engine. And um, for those of you that don't know how to get these, I mean, you can always click the recipe, but um, the basics of steel is to come over to a blast furnace and this one's still heating up, as you can see. Uh, well, not really, but I mean, it, it was just earlier. Um, how you get these, a lot of people place these down, and they're like, okay, so I'm going to put my coal in the top and my gunpowder, and what the crap, not doing anything. Well, if any of you are familiar with the industrial craft blast furnaces, um, you'll know that if you put lava in the middle and it, it actually heats up the furnace more, well, this works the same way. Um, you can either do it with a block of lava, which I have under this block. So if I were to come over here, uh, place a lava bucket down, and then place this, you'll slowly see this is going to heat up, but that takes forever. Um, if you can have a lot of power, uh, you can use a friction heater, which actually this serves the same purpose as a uh, if I grab a regular furnace. All this does is, is provides a large amount of heat. Um, actually, I'll just show you when this is done. So this is cold right now at 40 Celsius. So if I turn this on, this is going to turn this grinding plate, or the friction heater, and this is going to heat up insanely quickly. And not only does it heat it up uh, a lot, it actually goes well past the amount you can get with lava. So now if I place gunpowder in the bottom, coal, and then I can just fill this, um, with iron, it turns your iron into the steel ingots. Uh, now every time it will consume one coal, but it will not consume gunpowder every time, which is good because starting out you're probably not going to have a lot of gunpowder. Um, so as you can see this got up to 832 Celsius, which is pretty hot. Um, so that's how you get your steel. And uh, so now if we were to replace this with a regular furnace, you can see that, um, yeah, it's going to make a sound, which is kind of loud. I'm going to turn that down a little bit. Um, but now, if I were to grab, like, a stack of sand, throw it in here, you can see it cooks much faster. And you can see the temperature climbs up. If I were to... Um, if I were to adjust this, you can see it heats up much faster, and then the furnace will go faster. So that's pretty cool. Uh, for now, we're going to shut that off. Um, which brings us next to the back to the uh, magnostatic engine, which you have to create in a work table, by the way. Uh, most of your completed products will be completed in a work table. Um, so now, if you place this down, we're going to get into how to charge the coils. So as you can see, this has a redstone flux uh, capacitor inside of here. Um, 
so you can adjust the parameters of this engine. So right now if I come over to the redstone cell and I make this an output, this is going to, well, in there, it's going to start charging this static engine. Um, so now all I need to do, and this doesn't require a lever or anything, um, and then here's the, uh, the recipe. Again, you have to create it in a work table for the coil. Uh, it's not too hard. The only thing that's more complex than these two are the brake discs, um, which is not really that hard to make. You can, they're all crafted from steel. Um, so let's get back over here. Um, so this cell will actually charge, um, it will convert redstone flux into power for rotary craft. And now if I come over and I place one of these industrial coils down, you'll see this green and red uh, holographic kind of box. Now two tools you're going to definitely want to have at all times for rotorcraft screwdriver and the angular transducer. They're really not that hard to make. They're insanely simple. Um, the screwdriver, as you could probably tell, is going to change the directions of things. So, and the angular transduce, transducer checks the position and the, uh, the power for a lot of the machines. So if I right click this right now, um, the green is the input and red is the output. So right now I don't have the engine configured at all. So I'm going to right click the engine and I'm going to start just kind of, we're going to go to about, okay. So right now we're at, um, we're at four megawatts and we're still holding enough charge. This thing's got plenty of power. And right now this is as long as you're, now if your input, if your output in here, and this was the input, then it's not going to be charging anything and you can see the gears are stopped. So make sure it's facing the right way. Um, and now if I take my angular transducer and I right click, I can see in the left hand corner that right now I have 90 um, MJ into it. And it's just going to keep going up as long as I charge it. Uh, and the great thing about this that I think has over um, has over thermal expansion is you can just break these with a pickaxe and so I'm gonna get rid of my blast furnace you can break these with a pickaxe fail I'm in creative <laughs> okay if you break these with a pickaxe let's see so right now it's okay so it's climbing up break them with a the pickaxe and I come over here it's it tells me the charge that it has so you don't have to worry about breaking these without losing any power so that's a great thing and then you can also turn these off by changing the redstone control or you could hook a lever up to it so that brings us over to what you can use them for well basically these are um, essentially these coils are sp the uh, springs are w wound with power and when you put a redstone pulse to it it unwinds that power so this is great. You're essentially carrying mobile batteries with infinite power storage. Um, you can, uh, what I did on my other server, I just let these run like overnight and wake up with like just gigajoules of power. It was insane. Um, so in this mod, you can actually break bedrock, but this thing takes an incredible amount of torque. Um, so flip this on, set your settings and this will start to grind down bedrock now just for uh, video purposes I'm just gonna speed this up insanely fast and this will start to break your bedrock into dust and um, once this finishes now this is a creative cell so in, re in real life this would be well not in real life but in regular survival this would be draining this coil insanely fast but I'm just doing this to show you guys um, so yeah, you can break bedrock and then I'll make that sound when it's done and then you right click this, right click it again and you'll get four bedrock dust per block and, um, and then you convert that into bedrock ingots and you can make a whole ton of things. Now I'm going to set the time to midnight, I'm going to get back in creative so mobs don't follow me. Uh, same thing here, now I have slightly different settings. Um, again right now if I hold over floodlight and hold down shift it just needs a minimum power now the cool thing about the floodlight the more power you give it the more it's gonna shine so watch this this thing is going to light up the rest of your world well 
theoretically just as much as you give it power so as you can see this is great for like really long bridges or just an insane amount of light there's nothing in the game that provides this much light uh, so again really cool thing um, get out of here so next thing last thing we're gonna look at is the railgun now this thing does some serious damage if you're not careful so right now I have it uh, mounted up top and uh, all these things bevel gears all they do is change the direction so they're essentially just providing a way for me to rotate this coil to give power to here because this is mounted on the top um, so uh, the rotation speed of this is kind of slow which I'm, but trust me it makes up for the damage so if I right click this and stand back here it's going to start blowing some serious um, oh and it just okay well as you can see I did not even put this back far enough um, of course I have the heaviest ammunition you can make in here but um, the thing does an insane amount of damage uh, and the more power you give to it the more range it can operate on so that's pretty cool um, so yeah, I mean that's the basics of power management for road craft and getting into just a few basic machines. Um, so yeah, check back next time and I will dive into a few other mods and expand on road craft because there are plenty of things. Uh, there are so many parts to this mod that just do a whole bunch of different things. So yeah, this is Chris from Craftix and I will see you guys next time.